Hi. Question. What if the desperate, brooding, chaotic music of the Dark Souls series sounded more like the badass power trip of the Doom Eternal soundtrack? Well, now there's an answer, because I, Jeffrey Day, have cooked up an Argent Waltz from Hell with the help of two very special collaborators. You already know who they are because you looked at the title, but for the sake of this video, I'll pretend like you didn't read it. If you've seen even one of these videos, then you know that there's a timestamp marked below to skip to the music, and you also know that every single one of you over on Patreon has helped make this little episode possible. I talk a bit about what you can get by becoming a patron at the end of this video, so stick around. Can you imagine what kind of game it would be if the only way to acquire the Crucible was to fight the Abyss Watchers, I think you should follow Kina on social media and ask her yourself since she drew the thumbnail. Her links are in the description below. If you don't already know who they are, I'd like to introduce you to Game Music Collective. They put together these amazing arrangements and live performances of game music, and I've been watching their stuff forever, especially while I was making a bunch of Final Fantasy covers last year. True story, I actually laughed out loud when I saw the thumbnail for their newest video where they got a couple of monks to sing the Halo theme in a chapel, because there are memes, and then there's taking the time, energy, and and money to rent out an empty chapel and then hire actual monks to sing the actual Halo theme in it. It's just something else, really. Anyway, it turns out that a couple of months ago, a guy from over there left this little comment on my One Winged Angel cover, and while that was a gigantic missed opportunity for me, I finally managed to borrow their choir for this very cover. But we are in no rush, I will get to that shortly. Right now, with only a Bloodborne cover under my belt, and sadly because I have only watched these games being played by a friend of mine, I think I need to make sure I understand the Dark Souls world and tone as it relates to the music. So come on, let's see what we can dig up. So the more I learn about the Dark Souls franchise, the more I feel like everything is bad and it's not gonna get much better, but it could maybe be like the same amount of bad if you make it to the end of the game and do the thing. Come on baby, light my fire. Even after I watched some good videos on the lore of each game, I still sort of came to the same conclusion. I also noticed that during gameplay there's a lot of not soundtrack, if you get what I'm saying. Moments of nearly complete silence and perpetually dim lighting and a damp color palette and characters that only either mutter or scream their lines really add to the overall picture of a world being totally starved of life. It's very depressing. And when the music does come in, boy do Yuka Kitamura and the other composers love dissonance. That is, notes all playing together which end up sounding like roughness or if there's enough of them, just total noise. This might be a hot take, but stylistically I feel like the soundtracks of all three Dark Souls and Bloodborne are extremely similar in many aspects. Both have a big orchestral cinematic sound with choirs and horns and strings and percussion, but if I had to pick one thing that sets them apart, it's that Bloodborne's arrangements are a bit more focused on melodies you can recognize or sing along to, while Dark Souls leans hard into chaotic, noisy sounds to dictate the energy of the music. So, do both IPs have quote-unquote good soundtracks? Subjective question, but I think in the context of their respective games, yes, definitely. Now do both have memorable soundtracks? That's the question, isn't it? If we really quick look at the ratio of copies sold versus the times the top songs have been listened to, Bloodborne is doing a lot better. I've always been a believer in the power of a really good musical hook, and I think that's what can make a soundtrack song take on a life of its own. This is what I think makes Doom soundtracks as good as they are, and I'm including both the classic and the new ones in this statement. To demonstrate this, I'm going to badly sing three Doom songs, and you're going to know exactly which ones they are. Yeah, it was pretty easy, right? I can do this with other instrumental songs too. After those Grammy winning performances, now you understand why I only make instrumental music. Anyway, just take that as some food for thought about writing music that doesn't have lyrics. Before I forget, I asked you on Instagram what types of things I should answer in this video, and you gave me a ton of things that I should discuss. Like this one. I got you. And also this one. I'll do my best to show that. And then this one. I guess I can answer that one now. So for most of these, I don't use... 
Wait a sec. Wait a goddamn sec. Hey, David, how's it going? Levy, if you're watching Hold this, on. your UAC Atlantica guitar riff works so nicely in the chorus of Megalovania that I'm just gonna use it. Uh, <laughs> Is that a cello back there? Are you a cello player? Yeah, that's it. Oh, so cool. I unfortunately I don't really get to work with too many people. Yeah. You know, in my profession, like just as a composer, I'm usually I'm just the guy that's doing it. Even right, when so I was so working with Andrew and Doom, like I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but we worked completely, completely separately. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, you know, how much room did you both get to kind of embellish on the Doom sound and and do your own type of thing versus it being really rigid? You know, we talked to Chad, the audio director, and essentially him and, and Marty and Hugo all saying they, they don't want a Mick clone. That's not why they hired us. Essentially what we're told is, you know, stay respectful of what you're doing to, to the to the music that came before us and, and we can put our own spin on it. And that's exactly what we did. But just, you know, be respectful to that and make sure that it does match with everything else that was was done before us that's yeah. pretty wild yeah and like, then, don't uh, bring in don't bring in strings and taiko drums you know right, it's like right. i mean your yeah. experience is mostly what you know television where things are like structured out. uh mostly film on oh, and okay. animation you get a scene and you put the sound set and you know right away if it works or not that, that that was a big challenge with doom it's like there were a couple instances when I wrote stuff and it sounded great. And then yeah. I would always test it against game footage. And I would put the track in a game footage and I'm like, no, it's too fast or it's right. too busy. And yeah, there was yeah. an instance too, I wrote stuff for more like the first ambient music uh, pieces that I wrote. They sounded good, but later on, once I start writing the heavier stuff, they ended up sounding way too slow. Yeah. So the whole thing had to be like chucked out and then oh, start no. again on that. So that happens. What kind of guitar were you playing? Look behind you. The Allegator? Like this yeah. one? Oh, sick. <laughs> yeah. Something uh, I am personally curious about, and I'm sure a lot of other people are curious about, is like, you know, once you did start punching out songs and getting more comfortable with like the Doom sound that you were hoping for, what did that workflow look like? Honestly, like just mangling the sound as much as I possibly could. <laughs> yeah, There's yeah. a lot of sound design that went into it. Like yeah. just really crafting each sound. It doesn't matter what you throw at it. There's always room for more. <laughs> Yeah. Which was so much fun. Yeah. And honestly, kind of like working on this game really ruined me. <laughs> I mean, there's so much sonic possibilities with Doom. Yeah. Can't go back. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the key, and I think the secret, is a lot of running really hard through tubes. Gotcha. <laughs> if you can. That seemed to be the key for me. And um, a lot of compression and a lot of upward compression. There's a plugin on the market that came out recently. The um, Argent Compressor, oh, I think. On, David. I think it's... Shameless um, plug. It was just fun. It was just like finding a sound and the sound, by the time I started it, from the moment I started it, and, and by the time it was done, it sounded nothing like what it was <laughs> in the beginning. So yeah. it was really like taking like the most basic, anything from a sine wave to, I don't know what, just running it through all the equipment and seeing what you could do to it and what's going to come out of it. And it's, it's super exciting. It's yeah. super fun. It's super nerdy. I had a big problem when I got out of Doom. I was working on like a fractal-based film. I was in the habit of just destroying sounds. I couldn't get out of it for a little uh. bit. Doom is such an it's such a unique thing to work on. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't really translate very well to other things. Yeah. This must be a boring interview for your cat. He only wakes up when I play heavy stuff. I had to open up my one of my sound cards a few months ago. There was like three inches of white hair in there. Oh, gross. All <laughs> over the components inside. Hey, man, you, are you going to be around tomorrow if we get this started? Yeah, man, I'm ready. In the spirit of catchy melodies, and since we may not come back to Dark Souls covers for a little while, we decided to go with Abyss Watchers for this cover. And personally, I think the song could use a little more energy anyway, seeing as it is technically boss fight music. It wouldn't be a good Dark Souls cover without a choir, so Game Music Collective delivered. They just sent over the men's choir recordings, and look at all these microphones. <laughs> this is the real deal. It's really too bad that these fine men are about to have their beautiful voices mangled by a computer. Uh -oh. The original version of Abyss Watchers had singers and an orchestra, but we want singers and synths and guitars, so bye bye orchestra, hello metal band. We're not even just gonna replace the orchestra, we're gonna rewrite the parts too. 
The trick to writing groovy guitar riffs is mostly in the rhythm. I write the guitar parts to have a specific rhythm, and then the notes that get played kind of come afterwards in my head. It turns out that if you write that way, you can make the drum parts really quick too. If I write a couple of different rhythms and then switch them up occasionally, things stay pretty fresh. Fun fact, I am using Isotope Trash 2 as my first sort of guitar pedal. It's not really meant to be a guitar pedal necessarily, but as long as it's used before the amplifier, that basically is all a guitar pedal does, so it works fine. One misconception about extended range guitars is that they are hard or different to mix than regular guitars because they are low. The thing about guitar gear and distortion is that once you get the sound coming out of your guitar amp, there's actually a ton of audio information across the entire frequency spectrum. For this song, I pretty much just roll off the low end at about 100 hertz, and I roll off the high end a bit, and then I do a fairly standard metal guitar EQ treatment in the middle. For the guitars, it's mostly about mids rather than lows. The lows are reserved for the bass guitar. Game Music Collective also sent over these female vocal parts, which are from the Orchestral Tools Solo Opera Library, and I think they fit really nice. I want to make sure I don't lose the Dark Souls vibe completely, which has a men's and women's choir, and since we're attempting to blend the genres, and also since I want to separate this song from the Bloodborne cover I did earlier, mixing this opera vocal with some sort of lead synth might help a lot. I think maybe we should check in on David. He's been doing a bunch of sound design. Here's how you make this sound in five easy steps. Step one, pull up this synth and dial in this sound. Step two, send your signal through your Metasonic's two pedals and mess around with the knobs a bit until it sounds something like this. Step 3. Limit EQ, compress, and add harmonic saturation. Step 4. Overload the input of your two defaced summing mixer. And step five, add 6 dB at 50 Hertz and 5 dB at 10 Hertz. And there you have it, easy peasy. Okay, I'm gonna show you all the different tracks that make up this section. Here's what it sounds like what everything is in. And just the doomy stuff. All right, I'm going to show you all the different tracks isolated, starting with our holy shit synth kick. Then we have a rhythmic synth pulse. Here's another version of it that's a little more distorted and tighter sounding. A kick. Another pulsy thing. Kind of comes in and out. This is kind of a brooding low synth line. And this ambient thing. And all together. That's it. You know what? I was just thinking, I want to add a little more vocal stuff to push this song over the top. I have this really epic sounding men's choir from Orchestral Tools Metropolis Arc 4 that I think will add a lot of energy to the second half. Oh! So what I'm thinking here is that the vocals in our song so far have been somewhat reserved in contrast to the rest of the instruments, but adding this new higher energy performance will help tie everything together before the song ends. Oh! 
You see this right here? Yes, this. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the finished song. David was kind enough to both mix and master this track using some very nice hardware. What a beautiful little waveform sausage. So without further ado, Abyss Watchers from Dark Souls 3 in the style of Doom Eternal, covered by myself, Game Music Collective, and David Levy. Enjoy!
On a scale of one doom to 666 dooms, how doomy was that? Even for a waltz? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to support my work and these videos, as well as get access to deep dives and stems for this song, plus much, much more, please consider becoming a patron. The credits rolling, our folks already basking in the mountain of benefits, and to all of my patrons, thank you so much for your support. These videos happen because of you. You can get this song on Bandcamp for free or for any price you think is best, and you can also listen on streaming platforms by checking out the links in the pinned comment below. I'm working on a couple of originals next, actually, so keep an eye out for those in the new year. But until then, I've been Jeffrey Day. You've been incredibly cryptic, but worth it if I read the lore. And I hope you're back again for the next video. See ya!